Yes, it sure is. It's uh, okay. Sabbath has just started, actually, about forty minutes ago. Yeah, already. Wow. Yeah, and what time is it for you on Sabbath? Uh, it is just after ten in the morning. Oh, so it's in the morning for you guys. So you're yeah. all right. Well, that that's wonderful. I hope our audience understands this difference because you know that affects girls think about things like that i guess yeah yeah yes and and amy i wanted to tell you that when we first suggested doing this i wasn't you know i was like okay it'll be a, a nice little lark but you know i've been getting calls from oh, people really? that are really excited about it and wow. one one family in, in particular called me last night and it was such an encouragement, this gentleman said, for his wife, because they're kind of out there in an area where there's not any other contact with with women. You yeah. know, she just kind of feels alone. She yeah. didn't, you know, and so she didn't have any, she was just really excited and she just wanted to know if we were going to do any more. And so oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I, I I never knew that there was such a need. Sorry for you. Thanks, yeah. Luke. It's probably some tea. Thank oh, you. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Mike just brought me some water before we started. Right, right. You, you want to make sure that your mouth is not dry. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I know. Do, do you mind if we um, start out asking the people that are watching this to pray for there are people who are girls that are out yeah. there that feel so alone. I know there are some women whose husbands are not on board with them. Oh, yeah. Praise Father. They are doing it alone and yeah. they're struggling. And there are, are women who, you know, even though their husbands are with them in it, but they feel alone because they don't have any guidance. I don't know. When I first started doing this, Amy, there was nothing. There was nobody because mm -hmm. it hadn't even been invented yet. And I was just alone. I know what that aloneness feels. And we just want to let those people know that we're praying for them. They're on my mind constantly because I hear from these ladies constantly. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate what they're going through. I understand yeah wow that is um, um it's amazing that um these women doing it on their own um especially without your husband's support would be right just very challenging <laughs> it's I, just in, I, when you come across things like sabbath and um all the festivals and things of the, the worldly festivals the pagan festivals like to be doing it on your own in your family and trying to stay strong would be a huge challenge exactly and and <clears throat> And I both hear from men that are by themselves or their wife wants to do the other thing. And I hear from the women. And I just can't imagine having a household divided. But you, you know what? Yahushua just reminded me. He said that households will be divided against themselves. Yeah. He said that. He told yeah. us what happened. Yeah. I'm very thankful I have Mark. <laughs> right. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I feel, I almost feel guilty when I hear from these women about, you know, I think I don't have that problem. I don't know what they're going through. Yeah. Well, they're doing an amazing job then. Amazing to stay strong. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Yes, definitely. I'll keep them in my prayers. <clears throat> right. So oh, this is fantastic then that we can do this for everyone. I know that sort of I, I have times where I feel like that and it's funny um, that you were saying feel, that these women are feeling alone. My children feel like that. <laughs> um, they were saying to us this week, they've all been saying, 
oh, I wish Lou and Phyllis would come and live over here and then we could go live with Chris and Victoria again and Jason and Yuli so we can be around people who love Yahusha all the time oh. because they're surrounded by all their friends and family down where we live here. Um, I don't believe what we believe and the kids are feeling that. And, and I thought, I, I, I really, I didn't realise I felt like that but when you come across someone who is a believer, you just get so excited because you think you can be a bit more free, I think, and open with someone with with other with other nats room because you know they understand more what you know what you believe and what you're going through and things other people just sort of like well why wouldn't you celebrate christmas and why would you do that to your kids and especially children at this time of year i think they're really my kids are really feeling it because everybody's into the christmas thing and and they and and as much as they know it's naughty and everything they see everybody being excited and happy about this, uh, and they don't, and and they don't feel the same way. So why aren't people excited and happy about Yahusha? Why don't people love Yahusha? They don't understand, and so they've um, desperately been asking me all week this week if you guys could move over here <laughs> so that you could uh -oh. be near us, <laughs> uh -oh. Plus, so they could be around. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, in a neighborhood we lived in before, when we first came into this knowledge of the truth, we were just caterers and best friends with um, a, a Jewish family. And our son used to go over there and babysit there. Well, they wanted a Christmas tree. And you know what saddened me is that their father, I think, broke down and bought them a, a little oh, really? Christmas tree because they, the influence, because they were going to school with other mm. kids. And this was a Jewish family. But they weren't yeah. orthodox, but he came into the pressures of their children to want a Christmas tree. It was just, uh. it just broke my heart. I just, I, I didn't say anything because, you know, that wasn't anything to say. <laughs> you know, yeah. his, his children, his wife, his, you know. Yeah. But um, you brought up the fact, you, you sent me an email, remember? And I've got that email right here in front of me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you said that you wanted to talk about how how the the people are just going nuts and we've got a um we we receive we used to be members of a Christian church and so we still get their newsletters. Yeah. Every issue since the beginning of December, every issue that's come out has had some article about Christmas tree. I mean big ball this person mm -hmm has decided to put faces on that Christmas tree. This person wants to put ornaments that have meanings on that Christmas tree. And this issue, I don't even know what, but I saw pictures of Christmas tree. It's like the Christmas tree, the Christmas tree, it's like it has become the idol of the season. Yeah. It's just amazing. Do you see that going around you? Oh, yes, it is. It's um, insane. And... Every time we see a Christmas tree, the boys yell out, naughty, naughty, <laughs> very loudly. <laughs> um, yep. And then people just stare at us because they think, oh, what weird family, what weird children for thinking that's naughty. But they do, and it's everywhere. Absolutely. I mean, we avoid the shops at this time of year. It's just, it's too busy anyway. Um, but, you know, like they've got the decorations up everywhere. And you go to someone else's house and they've got it everywhere and it's just insane and the houses funnily enough this is the first year we've lived in in this street in this house that we're in here um the first christmas that we've lived here and every house in our neighborhood it's a very community orientated neighborhood um and every house has lights on it like flashing lights extravaganzas it's just insane and we're the only house there with absolutely nothing we're just sitting here in the middle of all these houses and people are driving up and down the streets every night looking at the lights and everything and it's really actually the first few nights got me worried because i was sitting in bed feeding um Aaliyah and there's a crack in our curtains and i can see the front the street and all these cars are driving down slowly and i thought people were casing out the neighborhood <laughs> i thought we we're gonna get broken into or something and then i realized it was just all the lights when i had to go pick mark up from work um the other night and it was dark i looked at the street and i thought oh my goodness i haven't noticed and they're just the whole street is just flashing with lights and the boys look out the window and go oh that's naughty that's very naughty <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're constantly talking about it but it does concern me when it is just so overwhelming in society how people are just so obsessed with it 
and so happy at this time of year. They're just so joyous and happy. And, and Marco, I always talk about how they've got the Christmas spirit. Um, and they're, and they're going to come crashing down in a couple of weeks when it's all over and the parties are all done and they've got to clean up and they've put on all this weight and they're all depressed about it and, and they're left with no money and all this junk that they didn't really want. <laughs> um, they, they, they're going to come crashing down. And, and, but everyone is really happy and excited at this time of year and we can see it in our family and in our friends and just people you meet like in the salon and everything. And I do get concerned because our kids are still young and they listen to us and they know that it's naughty and we've explained to them why it's so naughty and talked about the whole meaning behind the tree and everything and been completely honest with them. Um, and But as they get older, I think they could easily, I mean it's so targeted at children that they could so easily get caught up in it. I mean, already if people come along and give them a, a candy cane or something, they get excited because they're getting a lolly um, and they know it's naughty and they say, oh, this is naughty, but they get excited about the lolly and the gift yeah. that they get given. And my parents give them presents um, because my parents still celebrate it and, and they know we don't celebrate it, but it's to them it's important they get presents. And they don't wrap them in Christmas paper. They respect that, but they put them in a bag for them, all these presents, right. and the boys know they get presents at this time of year. And right. so I do have that concern that as they get older – it's going to be harder for them to stay out of it and not understand that, yes, it's wrong and, and naughty, but it just seems like so much fun. Everyone makes it so much fun. And, and clients say to us and people say, how can you deprive your children of Christmas? And we talk about, well, you know, we're not depriving them of anything. It's horrible, the meaning. Um, but they, they, the kids will, will, I'm worried the kids will start to think that we're depriving them of something. We're depriving them of the joy and the fun and the gifts and the, just because so many people are into it and the hype of it. What did you do with the boys growing up um, as they got to that age of a more understanding and the people around them were into it? How did you keep them sort of understanding that that it's not right? <laughs> you know, I, I was very blessed uh, because when, when our oldest son was Michael, when he was eight years old was when we – found out about the Christmas tree and the meaning behind it. And we were actually putting out the Christmas tree because I was still, you know, into it. And Lou was the one with the knowledge and wanting to be gentle, breaking the news to us, you know. <laughs> yeah. So we were, I would, it was an artificial tree. We actually had the tree up and we were getting ready to decorate. And Lou said, hold on, hold on. Let's think about this. And he sat there and he talked about it to me and the boys and explain what it was, and then he said, okay, so let's take a vote. What do we want to do? Michael, I don't think he was eight. He, yeah, he, he hadn't turned eight yet. He was the first one and said, oh, no, we don't want this. Let's take it down right now. And of course, oh, how wonderful. Adam was young. He was just, you know, two, three, I don't know, and, and he, he was like, he was confused, like, what? I don't understand. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. But Michael spoke up and says, no, I want this tree down. And That's so we, we put it back down. It was, you know, we hadn't put it and we put it back down. And then the the next um, good weather we had, we loaded his truck up with all of our Christmas decorations and EASTR and Halloween, because we were still doing that too. Put it on the truck. And when the truck drove away, I just felt this big relief, like, oh, I don't have to worry about having decorations and storing them and getting them down. Uh -huh. I hated getting them down. That was yeah. the part. And I just felt so relief. It was like, oh. And the children never missed it. We celebrated Hanukkah. Eight days of Hanukkah. Yeah. You know, eight days, <laughs> you know. And... They, they loved it because I made a point of having something for them every day of Hanukkah. And they, as far as I know, they've never resented it. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, I know that there are some things that, that um, my, my boys have had resented being ostracized. They've resented being the odd one out, you know. Mm. But... But they, they, I don't know, 
I think if you concentrate on Hanukkah, because there's a lot of things you can do to Hanukkah. There's lots of traditions. We, you know, I used to make the latkes. I tried the mixes. They don't work very well. So then you grate up the the, the potatoes and you make the and you get out, you light the candles and you, you know, you have candy and you have gifts and okay. you're happy, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. And so your boys don't celebrate Christmas still to this day? No. Well, you know, no. I, I, I know my, my oldest son, he has a little bit of a, a situation, which I really don't care to talk about. But, no, he doesn't celebrate Christmas to this oh, day. Oh, that's fantastic. It's wonderful to hear that. It's very encouraging to hear that when I've got – you know, with, for moms with young children, to see that you can raise them and they won't, they they keep going. You know, like they they don't get you know brought in by the the hype and excitement of of something like Christmas, which is probably the biggest uh, over here anyway, the biggest one of the year, the biggest pagan festival of the year that that draws that draws people in. Oh yeah, well you know it, it's it's Halloween's almost becoming bigger. Yeah. Uh, and, and except for the gift giving thing, yeah, Halloween is a, a huge thing, and it's a horrible thing. Mm. Halloween yeah. over here has never been a big thing. It's been a very seen as very American, but this year we noticed that it's gotten a lot more popular. The shops are all selling Halloween things, and everyone's starting to do the trick or treating and stuff. But I mean, like I grew up in a Christian home, and we, my parents, were very against Halloween. Mm -hmm. Um, growing up, so I've never had anything to do with it in my life. But I know over here it's probably not as big a, big a deal <clears throat> yet, although it seems to be going that way, <laughs> unfortunately. So just quickly, your camera's gone very blurry. Your image is very blurry. Has anything changed or...? I haven't moved. Um, okay. <laughs> it's it's just really... Yeah, it is really... It just, got, it just sort of went... Fuzzy, and then it's just stayed really blurry since then. Can, can you hold on? Let me go get a tank. Okay. Or, hold on. Sure. <laughs> Adam or Lou, I need help. I need technical support. My camera's so blurry. Oh, sorry. I don't have to Okay. Oh, Never okay. fear. Right. Help us here. All right, watch this. Oh, great. Oh, there you go. It's back. Yeah, you just hold your hand in front of it, and, it, and you don't want to wander too far away. What, what, do, do you think I lean back too far? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Is that better? How's that? Yeah, that's clear. Perfect now. Okay. Perfectly fine. Okay. All right. <clears throat> While you're there, brother, yes? Luca told me the other day, he said to me, we were sitting in the car and he goes to me, Mummy, I like Lou's hair. <laughs> really? Who was? <laughs> yes. Luca. He's, Luca? Um, he's nearly five, yes. He yeah, really like, he's very into uh, fashion and hair and all that. And he said, oh, I really like Lou's hair. And he loves your beard and your moustache. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very fuzzy fellow. He thinks it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm That's... sure as, once, as soon as he's old enough, he's going to end up growing it. <laughs> he's very excited by it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's really good to know. <laughs> yes. I thought I would share that with you. It's very <laughs> cute. Okay. <laughs> See ya. Okay, bye bye. Well, okay, can you uh, make it through there? Yeah. <laughs> I, I can make it. <laughs> it's much better now. Unfortunately, it was blurry for um, half of what you're saying, but I didn't want to stop you because we were talking. Um, so I waited till the end and then, so it might be blurry for a little bit there. That's okay. I'm sure Mark can do his magic, whatever he does. <laughs> All right. Okay. Sorry, I've disrupted the flow there a bit there with that. <clears throat> no, that that that's okay. G gave us an uh, an opportunity. Oh, it's done it again. Okay, so you might have to put your hand in front. Of... Is it better? Yep. Yep. It's better now. That's really that's strange. Like... <laughs> that is strange. Because I... you didn't seem to move, and it just went. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna stay real still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to look down at my notes. I did make some notes. It was so good. Oh, fantastic. Send me that email. Yeah. And uh, you you wanted me to share with um, the, about the temptations, and you know I I guess um, 
it, it it's a very difficult thing, you know, to to try to avoid the children from being lured away with the temptations. But you know, the comforting thing is, I know that um, we don't want to teach the children to hate those people who are caught up in it. Rather, yeah, the children yeah. need to feel sorry for them and be understanding, I guess. Because, you know, if you build a wall up, the, the, ten, the real danger here is for the children to, I'm, I'm searching for a word, to <sighs> come across with a, I'm better than you. Yeah. Because yeah. I have more knowledge than you. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. mm. you, you know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. better for them to be tolerant. That's what I'm, and I know. Lou teaches against tolerance, but I'm talking tolerance in a different way. I'm not talking about be tolerant of pagan things, but be tolerant of people who love the pagan things because you can't influence them in a positive way if you're being judgmental. Yeah. And, and, and that kind of goes with the situation I was talking about my son. He is teaching his children not to be judgmental. He's taught them the correct ways, but they're in situations where they have to be tolerant of people who, you know, have yeah, different yeah. meanings. And you can't you can't just be isolated. You know, I know I know we're supposed to be set apart, but meaning we don't because you don't want the you know, um, children walking about in the world just being, you know, holding their nose up in the air, and because that's not a good witness either. Mm. You, know, you need. Yeah, that's to fantastic. Sometimes. And and you know, like your children say, "Oh, it's naughty, it's naughty." You don't want them saying that to their neighbor because that's just going to isolate, isolate them from. I, I don't know. They're, they're, I'm not sure where I'm going with that. I think I've already yeah. discussed that. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying, making sure that um, people still feel comfortable in our presence, not feeling like we've, we're have we isolating ourselves from them because we're better or that, yeah. Like, well, when Lou and I first came into the knowledge of the, of the, the truth and, and the keeping the commandments and that sort of thing, we were just gung-ho. I mean, you never saw any couple that was more gung-ho. But what we ended up doing is we isolated our family. And my yeah, sister yeah. wouldn't talk to me for two years. Mm -hmm. Now, if something had happened to her in those two years, I couldn't have witnessed to her. I would have felt uh, the responsibility would have been on me because I yeah. isolated her to the point where I could not witness to her. She still won't accept the name, but she she and I have a lot of things that we agree on. So, and we're talking, we have a good relationship. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. I think um, a lot of people do that because I know when we first came into it, we did the same thing and we did cut our families out a lot. Um, we let them know that, you know, they didn't believe the right thing and we just really went full on, you know. We moved away from them to, to stay away, you know, like to keep, you know, to make life easier for ourselves and, um, you know, just like really cut them out. And it's funny, Mark and I were just talking about that this morning at breakfast, um, how how we how we have done that to our families and really hurt them um by the way we've just sort of cut them out and we've we had a situation in the family now where um <clears throat> a family member has done that to us because we don't believe what they believe um and so uh, he's uh, they they have mark's sister and he, he, her his husband her husband um have just they, they won't come to our house and we're not allowed to go to their house because they believe like he's just trained as a pastor and and he believes that you're not allowed to have anything to do with people who don't believe or have, have denounced what they believe and right. so we're sort of watching what they're doing and how hurtful it is in realizing that we've done that to all our family when we first came into the knowledge and, and first read fossilized customs and we just went full 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 wall like crazy you know cut everybody out and don't have anything in if you and we're telling everybody and you have to have it right and you must know the truth and and just really full on and and really hurt our families a lot and and we came moved back down to sydney 
to to sort of have fix that relationship but we realized we'd still done it a little bit since we've been down here and now lately we've been trying to to fix that and just really you know have a lovely relationship with them and and they know what we believe we don't have to be um in their face about it um but you know when things come up we'll say oh no we don't do that and they know they don't invite us to a lot of things now that we wouldn't go to the birthday parties and all that sort of thing which most of the time are on the sabbath anyway and they know that if they want to get together with us they don't ever ask to get together on the sabbath they they invite us over, you know, the next day or a different night or something. So, they, you know, everyone understands, but we can have that lovely relationship with them, um, you know, loving them, and then they're never going to see anything and they're never going to a, a, a believe or agree with anything that we believe. Right. If we're being judgmental of them and hating them like that, we've, we're learning now that we have to love them because they feel they feel they feel wonderful when they when they have Yahuwah's love coming from us at them and they and we can see it in our families they're just excited and they want to be around us more and they want to do things with the kids more and they want to help out and they just and they they their whole demeanor has changed and this whole time we've been sitting here blaming our families for not being you know lovely enough or not helping out enough or not doing this when we've now looked at it and gone it was us we cut them out we hurt them um, and so we've had to try and repair all that and show them that we love them and that, that no matter what they believe, we love them, they're our family and, and you know, like it's, you, don't, you don't get to people through hating them or judging them. I think it's really important to make people feel uh, comfortable and, and loved and um, regardless of, of what, who they are or what they believe. I think, that's, I think that's Torah, you know, to love everyone. Um, it's really important to love and we're sort of just learning it now <laughs> after going full ball into everything and, and cutting it all out and going crazy. And <laughs> But yeah. I understand what you're saying. I think everyone seems to sort of do that when they first come in. They get so excited. You just sort of tell everyone and you look like a loony because you just <laughs> – <laughs> you just change so suddenly and you're just expecting everyone else to go with it and, and change as well and, and, and people can't keep up with that and they're just like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, what you're saying is fantastic. That's really true to really um, not isolate people and, and make them feel wrong and everything but to love them, to really love them. And when and situations always come up where you get a chance to tell them things or but you can be loving when you tell them, you know, like, you know, oh, we don't celebrate that or we don't do that and, and explain to them why you get a chance, particularly at this time of year, to tell everyone because they we get all the questions, particularly I'm getting them, <clears throat> you know, are you prepared for Christmas with all the presents and the, the thing and the big day and, and I get a chance to say to people, well, no, we don't celebrate Christmas and everyone wants to know why. No one will just leave it at, oh, okay. Everyone wants to know, oh, why don't you celebrate Christmas? And you get a chance then to talk about it, um, but you've done it in a really gentle, nice way, loving them and not making them feel wrong for what they're doing, um, but showing them a, a little bit of truth. And I guess all you can do is plant those seeds and and then and, and let Yahusha go from there, what he wants to do in people. So it's fantastic what you're saying. I really, yeah, I agree. It's, it, it is very true. You go crazy and then you <laughs> have to settle down a little bit. <laughs> You know, you, you keep saying it's fantastic what you're saying, but you said it so much better than I did. <laughs> you know? Oh, I think it was wonderful how you said it. <laughs> I couldn't have said it any better. Great job. If there's any message that we need to get out there to any anyone, it's just not be judgmental and be loving and gentle. Yes. Yeah, it's very true, I think. It is. And it's just, yeah. And, it's, and it can be so hard sometimes. I was reading <clears throat> to the boys last night um, when they were in bed. I, I decided to read them some scriptures. And so I was reading from Matt at Yahoo and um, going through, we've read the first um, five or six chapters, and it talked about how you have to love those who hate you and persecute you and how hard it is. It's easy to love people who, who love you and who are kind to you, but how difficult it is to love those who hate you and persecute you and, um, and I mean, the timing couldn't have been better for us. We've got a family barbecue on tomorrow with Mark's family and with his brother, his brother-in-law and his sister who, who feel that way about us and really hate us. Um, and, and we'd been getting ourselves in a frenzy about it. What are we going to do and how are we going to handle it? And we read that scripture and I just felt so much peace because I thought we've just got to love them. And it's not going to be easy, but that's what we've got to do. That's what we've been called to do, to love them. 
and so um, yeah what everything that you're saying like just to to love people and to be tolerant of other people's what other people are believing because everyone's at different stages and different understandings and and just to, to for people to actually come through they need someone to love them love is what what shows people the truth oh, I think I love what you said they need someone to love them that is so wonderful the way you said that and and you're you're absolutely right yeah you know? and 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 I, I like what you said that that you know if you only love those who love you or only do good for those who do good for you don't the pagans do that also mm -hmm. you know, or he said don't the Gentiles you know do that also <clears throat> so it, we establish ourselves as being his children by showing our love one for the other yeah yeah that's fantastic I think it's wonderful this has gone on a bit of a train of <laughs> from Christmas and it is a time of year where you can get a bit more persecution for not doing it for not being in there in the celebration but to to be able to love people through it and it's not always easy and remembering to do it all the time particularly if you've got a chaos of children and things going on and I know our last couple of weeks have been a bit crazy with the kids and and so you find yourself getting frustrated with things easier and, and to actually look beyond yourself and beyond your family and to keep loving other people can be that, that challenge. And I think I worked out last night that the really important thing to be able to have the strength to do it is to be in Torah every day, to be reading it, because it gives you that strength and it just reminds you that what path you're supposed to be on. Just after reading that to the boys last night, it's been a couple of weeks since I've looked at any, any like the Torah or the scriptures, anything, and reading that to the boys last night just gave me that strength and just to know, you know, I can do this. I've got, I've got him in me. I can do, I can do it. And, and it reminds you of how to behave, like just being in it regularly and, and reading and understanding and knowing and is yeah, helps. Yeah. I, I, Absolutely, and and Lou read to the children when they were little. You know, every Sabbath we would gather around and just sit and read Torah. You know, even when they were, even when Adam was so little, he was squirmy, which your your little ones are, I'm sure. <laughs> but we just they just knew that this is the Torah. We're going to listen to it. You know. Yeah, and I'm sure it goes in. You know, they learn so much from it without you, you think, oh, is it really worth it? Are they really getting anything out of? But I think I think they do. I think they get a lot out of it. I think it's just filling them. They're filling them. They get filled with so much stuff um, from people and like everything that's people that you meet and, and your family and TV and everything. They're getting filled with so much stuff that I think um, that a lot goes in that you don't realize. Um, and so reading to them. You know what? If if they're even if they're not understanding the words that you're reading to them, they're understanding that you know that this is important and that they yes. should be paying attention. You know, and maybe later on they're going, "I wonder what that was that they thought was so important." <laughs> you know, yeah. But sometimes I do that myself, even as an adult. Somebody is really emphatic about something, and maybe I'm distracted, and then I come back and I think, "I wonder what it was that they thought that was so important." <laughs> But it you know, it's very true. Torah says, uh, Proverbs says, if you train up a child in the way he should go, then when they are old, they will not depart from it. Yeah. And I pondered that. I don't know if you have, I, I wonder what that means. And, and I've seen that, that when they are old, and, and you know, I've heard this saying all my life that when children are young, you're you're the smartest people in the world, but as they grow older and become teenagers, you get dumber and dumber and dumber. And then, yeah. then, then when they reach about twenty five, then you start getting smart again to them until they're yeah. thirty, and then and then you're the smartest person in the world because they by that time they've had kids and they yeah you know, and they say mom and dad they were really smart they you know yeah. and so I'm I'm thinking they have to get old old enough, mature enough, perhaps sometimes before they come to their senses, you know, like yeah. prodigal son, you know, you yeah. get older, grow up a little bit and go, oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Let me go back. Yeah. 
That's fantastic. Yeah, training the what you were saying there about the different ages. It's very true. It is very very true um, how people grow up. And I know having kids myself, I have a new respect for my parents once I had children, just because you see what your parents have gone through and what they've done and how they've done the best they can do and everything. And it's just it is. It's a it's a whole new challenge in life having children and you have a lot more respect for people who have raised children <laughs> knowing that it's not as easy as it looks absolutely <laughs> oh yeah absolutely well um so we did have the other question <clears throat> in the email i've got here um that was emailed through to us uh why do women always want to pick things out to bring down their husbands in public or in private? Um, sorry, I, yeah. I remember you sent that to me in your email and you know, I, I'm not sure I understand um, why do women always want to pick things out to bring down their husbands? You know what? That does speak to me a little bit because I remember when I was very young and Lou and I were first married and we were living in the flesh before we came to knowledge. Yeah. I always felt like, um, I don't know how to say this delicately, but that he thought he was better than me and smarter than me. I don't know. Some men do think that they're smarter than women. Yeah. And I, I, at least I got the impression that he thought he was smarter and better than me. And I was always wanting to prove that he wasn't as smart as he thought he was. And yeah. I, I, was, I was always trying to pick on and criticize. I never did it in public. That, that, I, I, that I don't understand. But in private, yeah, I, I remember when we were younger, I was always trying to tra bring it down to bring him down to what I thought my level was and I think that a lot of people do that it's not just husbands and wives but some insecure people I think yeah. women or men that are insecure always want to attack and point out the mistakes of people that they think are their betters because yeah. they feel uh, threatened by them and I know that that's what I did when Lou and I were first married I didn't know anything and you know what can I Get off the track a little bit. Yeah. That is exactly what Yahusha used to bring Lou and I back together. And the beginning, you know, because we've been married for 16 years or I don't know, maybe 15. I don't know how long we've been married. And, and I really, I was fed up. I wanted a divorce. We, we had, didn't have a relationship. And I just, I thought he was browbeating me, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted out. And then... I, I prayed and I asked, you know, the L-O-R-D yeah. um, to, I said, I need a new husband. I can't, I need a husband for my children and a, a father for my children, a husband for me. I needed it. And he told me to submit myself to my husband as I would to you. That's in the scripture that yeah. when wives submit yourself to your husband and he spoke to me, I heard it, I understood it, and I said, I had a Christian faith at that time. I said, yes, Father, I'll do it. And I submitted myself to my husband. I was obedient and submissive, and I quit trying to nag at him and bring him down. And guess what? I got a new husband. Yeah. <laughs> he, you know, he, he started reading the scriptures because I was trying to influence him. You know, uh, just like Paul said, you don't leave your unbelieving wife or husband. You just keep witnessing to him. And, and he started reading the scriptures and, and he started seeing how I changed. And he, and then of course he just went way past me. You know, he, yeah. he took what I had to offer him and turn it back 2200 forward I don't know <laughs> yeah. yeah so because of that because of my willingness to be submissive to my husband my husband learned the truth he learned the name of the creator and was immersed in the name and started teaching his family to keep the commandments 
Yeah. And it's wonderful. Just, just a little submissiveness. So I'm yeah. glad you brought that up. I don't know if that answered the question. Why yeah, did so. you do it? But that's the best answer I have. Yeah. I think that you were saying like you wouldn't do it in public. I think that's becoming a, a newer generation's thing. I think um, that the yeah, older generations would never have brought their thing, things like that out in public. It's it's rude and it's you know disrespectful. And but these days, um, the young young people are doing that. Young people are having their arguments in front of everybody and making people uncomfortable. <laughs> and they're picking on each other. And it's all jokes and funny and ha ha. But you know, underneath it really cuts and hurts and it is horrible lots of sarcasm and all that sort of thing that's really um in a, a, the basis of a lot of people's relationships so i think that doing in public is very much something that young people are definitely doing more and more and i see it in even younger generations than mine um i know that times when i've been if i've been frustrated at mark for something or angry at mark i might say i've said something in, in, and not i mean i wouldn't say it in a situation where i was in public with people who i don't know very well or but i have said it in such stuff in situations with close friends and stuff um because i get if i get frustrated with him or angry with him about something and i mean the you should be resolving it within you know yourselves but um i know that i have my thing would be I'd pick things out and mark if I was annoyed with him or frustrated or he wasn't listening to something I'd said and particularly if he hadn't listened to something I'd said and then something went wrong or whatever and because he didn't listen I'd be like see I told you you know you know because you get frustrated and I think that's been something that's for me I would I'd pick something out if I was annoyed or, or angry and and really shouldn't be doing that and and should be probably dealing with the the issues and talking to to Mark about it and saying, well, I'm frustrated about this or I'm angry about this, we need to work it out or, um, you know, what the problem is rather than um, than picking out things or trying to um, bring bring him down or make him look stupid or something um, like that. So, yeah, what you said was great, though. The in insecurity is a big thing because if you feel insecure, it's it's called, um, I don't know if you have it, if you've heard this saying, but in Australia it's called the tall poppy syndrome. Um, and nope. Australians, tall poppy syndrome. <clears throat> and Australians are renowned for it. They bring down everybody around them so that they are, no one's taller than them, no one's better than them. And Australians are obviously a very insecure nation because <laughs> Australians are really renowned for bringing down everyone around them to make sure that they are standing tall and they are um, the, the smartest or the 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 fittest or the whatever it is in the situation that they're in, they want to make sure they're up the tallest. So they bring down everyone around them. Um, and it's that sort of thing, making sure that you are um, not looking stupid or not, you know. So what you said, yeah, what you said was very true. I, I, I Very good, yeah. I, I, I understand what you're saying. That's good. So I think, yeah, I think that answers that question. I think it's, um, and of course it's not, um, in line, like you were saying, Torah says to submit yourselves to your husband. It's not in line with Torah for us to pick out things mm -hmm. and bring our husbands down. Um, obviously, there's going to be times where we talk to our husbands because something's upsetting us, or or there's something that we don't think is right, or we say that's not, you know, we don't think that's right or something. But to it, it needs to be, I think, an honest, truthful, genuine conversation with with your husband, not picking out things mm -hmm. um, and 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 bringing them down and and that sort of thing. I mean. I mean, it feels horrible if someone does it to you, so it feels just the same, I'm sure, uh -huh. for men. I think sometimes those women, well, I do personally think that Mark is really strong and he can handle anything. Anything I dish out at him doesn't bother him, doesn't faze him, doesn't upset him. I just think I can, I can do and say whatever I want and he'll be fine. And it's not true. It's not true because, you know, everyone's the same. But I think as a, as a woman, I think men are, are stronger and they can handle whatever whatever comes their way emotionally and they're not emotion as emotional as women or something so I think I can say what I want and he'll be fine it doesn't hurt him um and it's and it's it's not true at all you know and everything that you say still hurts particularly your husband because you have that relationship with them and you love them and and they love you so much um that to say something hurtful really does cut whether they show it or not and Mark is really good at at looking really strong but I know that underneath 
it, it really hurts. So um, I think that's been my thing. I think I can say what I want, um, but you can't. You Like you said, you, Taurus says to be submissive to your husband. Um, and so it is, that's what we should be doing as, as women and as, as wives, be submitting to our husbands. And you know what, that, I, that brings up another subject of a question I've had over the, you know, people call me, wives being submissive to their husbands when they are not believers. Oh, yes. You know, and now I was submissive to my husband before he was a believer, but I wasn't submissive to him uh, in ways of that, well, at that time, I, I was a Christian, so Christians have a lot of flexibility, but yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't do anything. I mean, I wasn't submissive in areas that I felt like were against my Christian belief at the time, but um, he, even though he wasn't even, you know, I, I feel like Christianity is a step where you is bringing us into the true knowledge and he wasn't even at that level with me, but I was still submissive to him. Yes. You know, women who have come all the way to the truth and the knowledge of the name and they want to keep Sabbath and they don't want to keep the Christmas tree thing. Mm -hmm. And how do they be submissive to their husband? You yeah, know, that's a really good question. How, where do you draw the line? Like if your husband wants a Christmas tree and wants to celebrate it with the kids and do that. Where do you draw the line, sort of, what you do and what you say there? What can a woman do? I mean, she's, gosh, that's scary. <laughs> mm. I hadn't actually thought of that because I'm just very blessed to have a husband who's <laughs> who doesn't. But it would be, exactly. what would you do? I mean, if your husband did want to do that. I'm sure there's plenty of women out there who do have problems, who have that, that issue. Um, and, and the birthdays, and but I mean Christmas would be a big one because you bring in the tree and the presents and the day and everything. And the reverse is true, you know, only yes. all, all somehow it seems to me like if it's the man of the household, he's, there, there we go again, <laughs> he has more authority, so if it's the man of the household, it seems like in a loving way he should be able to say, yeah. this is what we're going to do, but I understand he does then again we go back to that turning people off and we don't want to mm -hmm. shut the wife out and but the wife she doesn't have as much authority in the home she has to be submissive to a degree so is she how's she going to feel when the, when her husband puts up that tree like you said and he wants to raise the children that's got to be hard i don't know Do you have any ideas or suggestions I, I don't, I think it's hard in the, I know, it, well, in all of most families, the, the woman spends a lot more time with the children and teaching the children a lot more. Um, in some families, the opposite is true. Sometimes the mum works and the, and the dad's at home with the kids. But in a lot of families, the, the, the woman is with the kids the most. And I guess the only thing you can do is be teaching them the truth. Um, and then I guess you just have to be praying praying, praying and praying and praying um, and, and, and teaching the truth. And I guess it's then you, you can't, if you've got one, you can't fight about it in front of the kids. You can't show that, that battle in front of the children because I think that that would make it harder for the kids. I guess putting the children at, at, your, at the front of your mind there and, and wanting them to be raised, I guess the best way is to show that you're submissive to your husband but be teaching your children the truth. It's a, it is a challenging one. It is very challenging, I think, because you can, you have to show that you are uh, following scripture and, and you are being submissive to your husband, but then you don't want your children, you want your children to know what, what the truth really is. I guess maybe, I guess speaking to your husband about teaching the children both, like the truth as well and giving the children a choice whether to celebrate it or not, like you did with the tree, like um, Lou spoke about the tree and then Michael got the choice. And, and, he, and he said, take it down because he heard the truth. I think it's a matter of making sure the children hear the whole truth and then you just have to trust that well, they'll make the right decision, I guess. In that circumstance, um, 
it, it is it is very challenging. And then I guess on the day, if they're celebrating it, what do you do? Sit in the bedroom all day, or do you come out and be? It's, <laughs> that's that, that's a really you know I didn't even go there. I yeah, that's got to be awful. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 I'm, and I am personally friends with um, a gentleman who the reverse is true. Yeah. He, he wants to raise his children, but his wife is not of the faith, and she's a stout Catholic. Well, she turned Catholic later in their relationship, but that's mm -hmm. not important. But the, the, the important thing is he has to be very very sensitive because it's very touch and go their marriage in general yeah, is yeah. very touch and go and and he knows and i agree with him that for him to even be there in that household is probably the most important thing that he can do for the children yeah. right now is to be there rather than be locked out of the household which you know a lot of times the woman of the of the of the house has so much more power today. It's, women are empowered by um, the government because there's all this assistance. The government is so anti-family and anti-marriage. I don't even get me started on that. So women today uh, can just say, "I don't, I don't need to put up with you. Get out of here." You know, my my. Big brother will take care of me. I'll just get yeah. a check, you know. It's the same over <laughs> here, yeah. So, you know, he, th this gentleman has to walk on eggshells, mm -hmm. you know, just to be a, a daily influence with his children because if he steps wrong, he'll be out of there. Yeah. And <clears throat> we, we just need to ask all the women and all the men watching this tour talk, if they will just pray for yeah. those people and and ask for strength yes. to just go on and trust Yahushua that he does. He's still in the miracle making business. Yeah. I know it. I I, I know it for a fact. I talked to a gentleman the other day. I'm not I know this is off the subject, but it's on oh, the miracle making subject. Yeah. And he said he was literally in the mud just praying for another family that he and his family could have a relationship with because there was just nobody around that he could talk to or share with. And sure enough, he heard from someone else that, oh, yeah, there's a brother that lives right there in your city. Oh, and wow. And they got in contact, and now they're socializing. And so, you know, cares. There's a lot of people say, oh, he doesn't get involved in your individual daily. Yes, he does. He, yeah, he does. He hears our prayers, but he's just like real parents. He's not going to give you every little thing. You know, if, if your child is saying, why can't I have this candy? It's not good for you. You know, he's not going to give you the candy that's not good for you. Yeah. So we just need to, in our prayers, we need to remember his will be done. Yeah. Wow, it feels like we've covered heaps today. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, you know, I actually feel exhausted. I, I feel yeah. drained, you know. <laughs> I don't know how Lou and Mark do this for hours. I know they seem to go for so long, don't they? I know, I know. But I, I think we've pretty much covered the topics. Yeah. Is there anything else that we wanted to talk about? No, I think that's fantastic for today. That's wonderful. There's been just, you've just given so much wonderful information there. Um, Wait, I think a lot you? of people will get <laughs> You have to, young. Yeah. You look oh. at two. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people will get a bit out of out of this and just yeah like you were saying women are enjoying having the women I know um, a, a lovely lady over in America um, Rebecca 
who um, and she's been emailing me and we've been talking on email <clears throat> and she has been she said she hasn't got they haven't got anyone around them any believers around them and she emailed me after our last show and talked about what they do on the Sabbath and everything and said that she was longing for that female sort of just women to, in believers and that's from women to talk and and to have that relationship and to hear because I mean I know I I think sometimes I think as a parent and as a mother and raising the kids and everything how, is this the right thing to do is this the right way to go and and you don't have someone there necessarily to talk to you can't just talk to anyone because they'll go oh, yeah whatever they don't understand the belief they I don't believe what you believe and they don't think that what you believe is true and um, and so to have other women around there talking and being able to go, oh, yes, yes, that's what I was thinking. Oh, that's right. That's fantastic. That is another question that just reminded me. Mark did ask me to talk about it as well. Um, yoga. What, what is your uh, take on yoga? I mean, I know it has a very a spiritual um, – a lot of women around here are doing yoga and stuff. It's the in thing. Um, we, the natural women doing yoga. Do you, what, what do you say about that? I'm, I'm very nervous about it. I, I, you know, and it's like any other thing. Because yoga is a very spiritual thing. If you're not doing the mantras, if you're not doing the whatever the, 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 the they have you do yeah you know yeah. i can't think of the term you know but that's all part of it you know yoga yeah. is uh, if it was i mean if you just want to do stretches just do some stretches you don't have to do this um something that yoga is actually a, a pagan worship yeah thing you know yeah. if, if it's not pagan it, it's it's you're supposed to get in touch with your inner self. I don't know that anything. I want to caution everybody to do anything that causes you to get in a a trance. You know, mm -hmm. the, any kind of um, self hypnosis kind of thing, chanting uh, mantras, anything like that, because what you're doing is you're leaving yourself open for demonic influences now i don't think if you're spirit-filled people i don't believe that you can be demonically possessed but you can be influenced yeah. you know? and and you know that's how these people get in touch with these spirit guides where well, the spirit guides are nothing but demons they will talk to you if you open yourself up to them you will talk to somebody and you will be convinced that they're an angel and yeah they were at one time a fallen angel, yes, you know. So I, I would personally stay away from yoga if you just want to stretch. There's lots of ways of stretching without doing the mantras and the, and the prayers. And yeah, all. I know Pilates is a big thing now. I don't, uh, from what I've heard, it doesn't have anything. It's not. A, it's just a stretching. There you go. It's nothing. Do the nothing more, and it's very similar. So yeah. Yeah. Um, what about something like karate? I know when I was growing up, because I grew up in a Christian household, my parents were always against karate because it's a spiritual thing. I actually don't know anything about it because of that. We weren't allowed to know anything about it. Um, and so, is that is it? Do you know much about karate? Is that is that a spiritual thing as well? It's interesting you bring that up because when when we were a Christian family, we Lou and I and Michael and. I, 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 Adam was too young. We all took karate, and mm -hmm. you know, but we quit after a while because something about the bowing down and calling the teacher master, um, it didn't feel right, you know. Yeah. I, and, and I'm not saying that maybe that's not worth we weren't worshiping that person, but the, the idea of bowing down and calling a master. Mm -hmm. Because we're not supposed to bow down to idols. And we just felt, even as new Christians, we felt like we couldn't do that. And and I know, you know, that we later on with the truth, we wouldn't have done that either. Yeah. So I I don't know. I maybe it's okay, maybe it's just showing respect. It but you're right. I think what you're saying, though, bowing down, and don't they sort of put their hands in the prayer position, and which is wrong as well because you're pointing up to the sky. So I think what you're saying, yeah, that's good. I didn't realize that they – now I've 
it's probably seen in a movie or something. It sounds very um, a, a pagan to be bowing at a person and right and, and and putting your hands in that prayer position. So right, yeah. And, and you know that hand position that you were just showing us that that comes straight out of paganism. You know. Yeah. It, what, 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 where does this come from? Where this? I don't where, know. This, That's uh, definitely from India or something. Yeah, like something. something. Yeah. Yeah, that's coming from. You see the statues over there, you know, doing that. <laughs> guest, uh, a, a guest um, interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's, yeah, what you're saying sounds right, but it's, it's probably something to avoid um, altogether. I actually um, met a lady recently who lives near us. Um, I was just talking to her this morning about her. She's due to have her first baby any day now. Um, and she's separated from the father and everything. But she's into, um, she's she's got a guru or something over in India or something like that. And and, and just the things that she has, has um, put on Facebook and the things she's talked about. I said to Mark, she's starting to freak me out a little bit. It's really spooky because they they worship this man. This And he's a really really scary looking man because he really looks like I said to Mike he looks like a pedophile or something with this freaky hair and he's just really a really spooky man. <laughs> um, yeah. you know, I, before I, I want to comment on that but Lou just gave me this it's been 60 minutes though so that's what I used to do to him and and my uh -huh. his torn talks and I put little signs where he just gave me a sign now I understand uh -huh. <laughs> but you know, I remember you just reminded me of something when we were doing karate, and here's how I here this is what's kind of scared me about it is we fell in love with it. Anything to do with karate, and and I anybody I knew that did karate, I just thought and I put them put it all up on a pedestal. It's like this is what I'm worshiping now, karate and everything yeah. karate. And we went and we bought things to do with karate and and it was like man anything karate this this is great and, and I just and I I even knew a neighbor who taught karate classes in his backyard and just hearing him teaching these classes I would just get this thrill yeah. because I was so close associated with somebody teaching karate that can't be good no. not, not when you have that kind of all-encompassing and it was very mm -hmm. soon after that, that that we just kind of turned it off and just quit and you know, it's over. We're not we're not going to expend our energies that way. Yeah. But like Lou reminded us, it's been sixty minutes. Yes, yes. yes. So what do you think, girl? It's been it's been wonderful talking today. <laughs> oh yeah, I love it. It's it's a lot. Like I felt like last time. I think I was a bit spaced out too because I just hit, got hit with that flu and the temperature right after I got off to you, and oh, so I was a bit sort of spaced out. Um, but this week's been wonderful. I'm glad we kept it short last time. But you know, honestly, I couldn't tell that you were sick. Yeah. I was surprised that you were that ill. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's, a, it's all over now, but it was just sort of one thing after another at that time. I think I just got every bug and my immune system must have dropped down and I just kept picking everything up for a couple of weeks. And I've never been, I've actually never been sick like that in my life before. I never pick things up very easily. So it was quite um, insane. <laughs> but um, it's been really wonderful today. So, yes, I've enjoyed it. It's been fun. And yes. maybe, maybe we can get some more requests to people right yes. here. To either one of us, email me or email you with yeah. subject questions. I, I love yeah, it. What do, what do the real women of Torah want to talk about in here? <laughs> so. you go. I love it. Thanks yes. for the title of the Torah talk. And I love the pictures that uh, Mark wants. I haven't actually had a look at them yet. So I'm excited to have a look at that after after this. So. They're great. They're great. Okay. Oh, you have a wonderful Sabbath and, and rest and go and, go and have a rest now. <laughs> Yes, we're going, to, we're going to rest now. Thank you. Wonderful. All right. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Bye. Bye. He is good. He is good. He is good. Yahushua.